Well, good job. One minute into the video and we are at 23 red flags. It's hard not to when almost everything she said was a huge colossal red flag. You know guys, my last video got recommended to some blue pilled people, apparently, because I got a few comments saying, Oh, so this is where the incels are at. Oh, your channel is as hateful as the comment section. Oh, why can't we just love and respect each other? And I like hearing all the opinions. I love them, obviously. But this type of woman is why. Respect is earned, not given. It doesn't mean I'm being hateful. I wish all these boss babes the best. But I'm not going to respect their behavior. I'm going to make a video about it and share with the world how toxic, meaningless, self-destructive and fatherless this behavior is. Like what is this woman, 22? And she already has more baggage than most 40-year-old 304s. I'll answer the famous question of, where have all the good men gone? They don't want to deal with this type of stinky bullcrap. And of course, we end the video with, currently self-sabotaging all romantic opportunities because F love. <laughs> yeah, F love. As if you didn't make 300 mistakes one after the other. It's as if this woman is asking the question, who crapped my pants? This douche face right here is a red flag. If you've seen it, you know, this entitled, narcissistic, self-absorbed smirk screams she's for the streets. And in case there's anyone out there who still believes that when women say they are single, they really are single, here is more proof it's not the case. As a viewer commented on my last video, when they say they are single, they are just being run through the sausage factory. All of these, quote-unquote, talking stages, situationships, girl summers, etc., they are just code for the sausage factory. You guys love each other, huh? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's sweet. That will go away. <laughs> you cannot trust anybody ever. And you know, gentlemen, as she said, as she said it best. Every relationship. Let me skip back a few seconds. Every relationship I've had has failed horribly. Uh, you are the common denominator. Don't involve women who can keep a man into your miserable life. And he's not fucking any other girls? Then I would be like, well, why isn't he? Correct me if I am wrong, but I feel like that is the greenest flag a person could possibly have. It is so green, a colorblind person could see it was green, okay? When someone has to keep jumping around from relationship to relationship or, like, it just keep, you know, indulging in, in hookups and stuff like that, that tells me that that person can't be alone or doesn't want to be alone is, and is, like, afraid to be alone. And so that would tell me that if I was in a relationship with them, they would need constant validation from me or, and then they would be super insecure. And my sweethearts, if that is you, you need to go seek therapy and get some help because that would really suck to be in that state of mind. So when someone can be alone for a long period of time, that tells me, like, they have a lot of self-control and, and discipline, and they actually enjoy time by themselves. I don't know, that seems like a really good, seems like a really good trait to me. In tonight's episode of Nightly Chats, we're discussing hookup culture, my experience with it. We're going to retouch my makeup a bit from today, glam it back up. Lots of y'all requested this. I wanted to structure this video properly, but I didn't prepare at all. I am going to start by prefacing a big catalyst into hookup culture was my trauma. And Not surprised at all. Many street walkers get into this job because of trauma. And the difference between street walkers and promiscuity that comes in the form of having an OF account, going through hookup phases or posting questionable pictures online is not that big. It doesn't always have to be trauma. It could be bad parenting, lack of a paternal figure or poor mental health. As you can see, there is a reason why men naturally don't like these things. There is a reason why these things turn off men and why we call them red flags. And because I don't want my entire video to be trauma dumping, I'm going to mention it, set up the timeline, move on. In the spring semester of my senior year of high school, I went through a sexual assault. And the reason I call it a catalyst is because before that happened to me, 
I was someone who viewed sex, my body, relationships, love, being in love, being a girlfriend, being a mother, having children, all of those things all differently. Before this assault, all I had experienced was my first kiss three months prior. I went all of high school without a boyfriend or a girlfriend, but I didn't know I was gay at the time. I have been debating for like five minutes how detailed I should be about this. <laughs> Essentially, by the time summer was over and I was entering freshman year of college, I was engaging in some serious hookup culture. I found myself, you know, involving alcohol a lot in my life, going out to parties, rap parties, finding situations that I could potentially hook up with someone. I essentially expressed this same behavior for all of freshman, sophomore, junior year of college. And I really want to emphasize that this is me and my experience, okay? Like, the big ol' HC, she kept me in a state of avoidance for years. I really believed at the time that hookup culture was the answer, that I needed to have control over my body and just sexual liberation. I was literally just trying to replace my bad relationship with sex to a good one. I think in general, it could have been okay if I wasn't using it for a coping mechanism, but I was. I really was just putting myself through more unnecessary emotional grief. So to kind of start wrapping it up, I talked about this recently in a video, but I am a year celibate and that is something that matters to me, you know, after this type of history. And I'm just going to be honest, for something that is supposed to show me what pleasure was and it was supposed to give me a new perspective on sex, hookup culture gave me very little pleasure. That could also be because I'm super gay and... 99% of the time don't enjoy sleeping with men. To each their own y'all, okay? I think that there can be a lot of benefits to hooking up and destigmatizing, talking about it and enjoying it. Unfortunately, you do need to protect your heart and your body and we only get one body and our bodies remember, you know? I am very proud of how far this body has come. Okay, I love you. Oh ma'am, you're gonna make me blush. But jokes aside, this is how womanism lies to women, by telling them that having a high body count is liberating and empowering and taking control of your body by somehow giving it to, for free to chads. I don't know. Reality is, it confuses women. It makes them lose their perception for what a good man is and what a healthy relationship, uh, what a healthy relationship should look like. It leaves them with emotional baggage and an unstable mindset. But leave me your comments down below, gentlemen. What do you think about the, the whole thing with the hookup culture? When I went to college, hookup culture was just like so normalized. I remember there was a girl in my dorms and she was a virgin. I remember one of the first weekends when we were going out, she was like, I want to lose my virginity tonight. She did with like some random guy that I don't think she even like got his name. I feel like that's just the nature of like college and like America with people in their 20s. Just so normalized. The biggest scam ever. Women have been fed this lie that if they participate in the hookup culture, it's going to make them feel happy. It's going to make them feel liberated. And the more I'm learning about feminism, the more I see that hookup culture actually like damages women. And it's like, it's not for women. Guys, I haven't watched the whole video. I didn't know this woman was going to say word by word, my last argument. The only people who benefit from this whole liberation are chads. Never has it been easier to take girls home. So yeah, thank womanism for that. The reason feminism is a scam is because it's trying to tell women men and women are the same. But we're not the same. And that's why hookup culture is a scam because men and women are not the same when it comes to like things like this. What makes a woman valuable is her purity and her innocence. What hookup culture does is takes that away. And all over TV, movies, media, we're told that like hookup culture is so empowering. I just feel like we need more voices of people telling the truth, like telling people like, no, it's a scam. Ironically, this woman that is trying to make other women aware will be called a pick me. Modern women don't listen to advice from their parents, even their friends. They don't listen to the advice of, you know, logic and a reasonable mindset. They prefer the sweet womanist lies, and this is how they end up being undating material. 
my last situation ship left me in such a I don't trust men mode I've decided this year that I'm taking the men for what they're worth and like literally playing jokes on them and by playing jokes I mean I'm literally doing market research to prove how icky guys are basically my social experiment was that I hit up three different guys and was literally like hey can I come over all guys I knew just like from a variety of things like work life whatever so it wasn't like I was gonna get like murdered or something but basically I pulled up to their houses simply watched a movie and left and these are the results guy number one was super lit we watched 21 jump street we were laughing kicking it having a great time all throughout the movie like honestly a real one a homie we vibe him dude number two almost made the cut we made it through the movie i forgot what movie it was because it was really random but um <laughs> then i went home and when i got home he literally messaged me well, that was odd. Oh, like, why was it odd? Why can't we just, like, hang out, watch a movie? What do you mean? <laughs> Y'all, dude number three, I literally can't. Um, literally the worst reaction out of them all. And he still likes my stories, so I'm kind of like, get ready to love me from afar because you're on my shit list. So I'm driving home. He lives right down the street. I call him. I was like, hey, like, what are you doing? I'm right by your place. Like, want to hang? Literally pull up. He asked me if I, like, want to drink or anything. I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm good. So we're watching the movie just chilling. Obviously, like, trying to, like touch me whatever i was like no i'm good like just like not my vibe he literally goes then why did you come over <laughs> and i was like oh i just wanted to kick it i just like wanted to hang out with you like i don't see the problem he literally goes but like we don't hang out like that and i go we're hanging out like that right now <laughs> and he just like kept talking about how confused he was bro i was just like i don't get it like i'm just like just trying to enjoy the movie like i'm just trying to like hang out like what's up so he literally like it wasn't like we could just continue watching the movie like he had to keep talking about how strange it was so much i was like yo like should i just go should i just leave so yeah basically um the results are in the men are icky because clearly like if a female is in their house they literally can't just like chill out and watch the movie like y'all got hook up or not nah? like i can't like men have the last laugh they will dodge a bullet with you then move on to something better Enjoy your wine in your 40s. Men, you have to be a fool to date a woman who posts on TikTok all the cringe of the 400 dates she had and how she played men. Just disgusting. But gentlemen, thank you for watching this video. A lot of red flags today. <laughs> but thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Have a good day.